The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we got markets slightly in the red just off of the market lows. You see the action overnight. We got a five minute chart pulled up. Boy, you talk, take a look at Friday, right? Quite the dive lower. We get it back towards the end of the day. Intraday yesterday, quite the dive lower. We make lows at about 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. You drive higher to the tune of almost 50 points by the end of the day. Today, we were already down to 52.62. We've reclaimed 20 points in the S&P. We're still negative by about 15 points right now, down about three-tenths percent in the red on the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 37 points, 18,610. You get the Dow right now, negative by 96, 38,516. You get the Russell right now, negative by 18. Check out the Russell, right? You talk about a pullback, did not reclaim what we had happening yesterday. You talk about a pullback on the Russell on a percentage basis. Bitcoin, hanging out pretty well, right near 70,000, 69,560 for Bitcoin. We talked about it yesterday, man. I was on with Jacob. Jacob's going to be joining us at 930 again today, so he'll jump on for the program, uh, a little bit of conversation. And yeah, I mean, look where we were yesterday. Remember the conversation about OPEC? We came on the air. Oil was trading at 76.50 about, yeah, 9.15 or so. We were starting 9 o'clock. We were trading at 76.68. Check it out, folks. We had a 72 handle. What were we talking about yesterday? Potentially coming down to maybe the $70 price range. And boy, if you blow through there, $60 is where you're going for the price of crude. And it is interesting where I was saying, you know, it's interesting. I'm a little bit of a bear with crude. I'm a little bit of a bull with gold. Now, gold trading lower today as well. Gold down about $17. And yeah, you know, it's tough to be a bear and a bull on both sides of that, but it can happen, folks. Okay. It can happen for sure. But part of what's going on, of course, is you got the dollar. You take a look at the dollar yesterday. Interesting when what do you have? You have extreme dollar weakness. Okay. That can help put a bid in gold usually. But nonetheless, you have declining crude prices. Dollar up a bit this morning. Up about 20 pennies at 104.29. That's going to stress when you're pricing commodities. Of course, in dollars, it's going to hurt the price. Nonetheless, they're all correlated. And yeah, I mean, pay attention to crude, though, man. You talk about a haircut. 72.93. When Jacob came on the air at 9.30, I was mentioning that we had just gotten below, I think, where we were for February. Yeah, so that was bringing us back. I mean, look at where we are. We're getting it all back. And what is interesting here is if you got an A to B, C to D here, A point, 95, B point, 70, C point, 85, D point, 60. Simple math, $25 A to B leg. We'll see how we trade into that $70 range. You can see that we did chop around there. We hit that area December 7th. You chopped around until at least the middle of January. You can make the case. You came back and tested a low of 72.38, almost where we are right now on February 5th, right? That low, actually 71.41, excuse me, 71. Let's zoom in and make sure. 71.41 is the low back there in January, excuse me, February 5th. And yeah, we're inching towards that price level. Looks like $70 is where we're heading right now on the price of crude. Quite a day yesterday. Look at that red bar. Quite a day. And you've had a series of lower lows, lower highs, all the way dating back two months to April 5th on the price of crude. All right. Gold, as I mentioned, trading a little bit lower as well. But as you see, even with the dollar, with gold, with crude, gold just chopping around near these highs, man, making a little bit of a base in about the $23 to $2,400 price range. You're pulling back a bit. We got a little bit of dollar strength this morning. Gold, negative $16 at $23.53. Silver, quite a pullback for silver, man. You were up to $520. You're back to $455 right now. And you got to jump to notes and bonds. We're catching a little bit of a bid right now. You got the 10 year up another eight ticks. You got the 10-year yield at 4.36, 4.36% right now. We get the jobs number coming out on Friday. It's going to be interesting action, to say the least. And where are we coming back into? Right where we were on May 16th, right? That high was at 109.31.5, basically 1.110. 
Okay, one oh, you about as close as you can get to one ten within half a tick. One oh nine thirty one five. That's also kind of the area that was your support, right? Now you did trade down to a, what's the low here? I mean, if you want to take it one oh nine oh nine, but you can see you build a base at about the three eight two here. Okay, and that's going from the move we had from December all the way to the lows you had in April. The 382 is where we got to originally in May. We're right back to that area, and that area correlates to the area that you had support in back in February. So kind of a critical area right now. As we march forward, we'll see where we go. As you get some higher price, you get lower yield. We got a 10-year at 4.36% right now. Interesting action, to say the least. You jump over to the volatility index right now, 13.65 in that VIX. Got a little bit of a spike yesterday. We put it back to a five-minute chart for some context as the markets pulled back on both those days, as in you had the pullback on Friday, the pullback on Monday. We've seen spikes. We're back to under 14 with a 13 handle of 13.65. All right, where do we kick things off? Let's kick it off with Intel. Why not? They got the conference going on in Taiwan. Yesterday, the news was NVIDIA and AMD, and today, the news is Intel. So you jump over to Intel. Intel shares. We were trading at about $30.29 at the close yesterday. You see the drop-off yesterday. Pretty interesting. And today, you're going to trade back to the highs that we had basically at the open yesterday. 3087. The news out there. Intel. Well, guess what? I mean, it's pretty remarkable, right? What did you think that they were going to come to the stage with after NVIDIA and AMD come to the stage with new chips? Intel comes to the stage with new chips. The announcement comes as rivals NVIDIA and AMD launch theirs. Intel on Tuesday announced a new Xeon 6 processors during that same conference we talked about yesterday, Computex Tech, Tech Conference in Taiwan. They're trying to catch up after having largely been on the sidelines of the AI fren frenzy. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, that's the CEO there of Intel. And yeah, they're going to deliver better performance and power efficiency for high intensity data center workloads as compared with its predecessor. And it's six months after they launched their fifth generation Xeon processors. Nonetheless, you're trading a little bit higher, but you're not even back to where this equity opened yesterday. You jump over to NVIDIA. Can't hold NVIDIA down, man. You open higher every single day, it seems like. You closed yesterday at almost all-time highs. You closed yesterday right on the dot of 11.50. You're trading basically at that price point right now, 11.49 for NVIDIA shares. You got an all-time high out there of 11.58 for NVIDIA. You jump over to AMD. Quite the pullback from them yesterday, right? I was talking to Jacob, and it was interesting where it's like, man, you look at NVIDIA, and they held on to that acceleration. You look at AMD, even at 9 in the morning, AMD had already started to give it up, and boy, they gave it up in spades, as my dad would say. He's back today at 3 o'clock as well, folks. My dad, he was away for the weekend, had a good time. He'll be back in the, in the saddle this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Appreciate Jacob filling in, doing such an outstanding job for him in the afternoons. Always enjoy that program. But yeah, AMD, man. You talk about a haircut from where we were yesterday. At 170, we're back at 162, but NVIDIA, not the case. There is no pullback in this equity, man, as you're pushing 1150 on the open, 1149.53 right now, to be exact. Pretty remarkable. You jump over to Tesla. So, this story writes itself, folks, okay? You see the drop-off there from 177 to 174? Well, as we're coming on the air, where is it going to be? There it is. Elon Musk ordered NVIDIA to ship thousands of AI chips reserved for Tesla to X and AI. I mean, there's many cults in this country right now, and Tesla is turning into one of them, folks. We'll talk about this when we get back, because what are you paying your CEO $55 billion for if he's shipping the most important commodity out there, AI chips, to his private companies? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets right now, slightly in the red. S and P's off by 12. Nasdaq 100, you're off by just one tenth percent right now, trading off 18 points, 18,627. You get the Dow barely in the red. Russell, though, Russell, man, how about it? Off by almost a full percentage point, 2,046. And yeah, I mean, this should be a mammoth story, folks. We'll see if it does turn into a mammoth story, and it could turn into a mammoth story because I do not understand how you're paying your CEO 55 billion dollars to circumvent AI chips to his private companies ahead of your public company. And part of the reason, if you recall, that the board was arguing and Elon was arguing for this pay package of $55 billion is that he is an extraordinary individual and that to keep his attention on a company as an executive versus an entrepreneur that's going to want to pursue other endeavors, right, you really had to lure him with a pay package of extraordinary amounts to keep his attention in this public company as opposed to having other – ventures that would take his time away from Tesla. Well, it's pretty tantalizing, folks. It doesn't get much more tantalizing, especially when you got basically talk inside of NVIDIA that what he is saying on his conference calls conflicts with actually the data that is in NVIDIA. So Elon ordered NVIDIA to ship thousands of AI chips reserved to Tesla to X and XAI. Now, he just raised a, a funding round at XAI valuing it at something like 18 billion dollars uh, something like that i believe and let's get into the meat of it man so 
Elon has claimed that he can grow Tesla into a leader in AI and robotics, right? He's often claimed they are not a car company, okay? But what you have here, okay? Now, in April, Musk said that the company will increase the number of active H100s, that's NVIDIA's flagship AI chip, from 35,000 to 85,000 by the end of this year. This is the CEO on an earnings call of a publicly traded company, okay? He also wrote in a post on X a few days later that Tesla is going to spend $10 billion this year in combined training and inference AI. And then you have emails written by NVIDIA's senior staff and widely shared inside the company suggesting that Musk presented an exaggerated picture. Do you believe that, folks? He was exaggerating things on a conference call for Tesla? I mean, you got to be sarcastic. It's ridiculous at this point. Um so, exaggerated picture of Tesla's procurement to shareholders. This is NVIDIA senior staff. If anybody is going to understand what type of procurement Tesla is going to have of NVIDIA chips, it's going to be the senior staff. Correspondence from NVIDIA staffers also indicate Musk diverted a sizable shipment of AI processors that had been reserved for Tesla to his social media company X, privately owned, as well as AI is in here, Okay. By ordering NVIDIA to let privately held X jump in the line ahead of Tesla, Musk pushed back the automaker's receipt of more than $500 million in graphics processing units GPUs by months, likely adding to delays in setting up the supercomputers Tesla says it needs to develop autonomous vehicles and humanoid robots. I mean, it's... it's it's pretty much illegal if, if, if what they're saying is true, right? You can't go out there in a publicly traded company on a conference call as the CEO, say one thing, in the back end, you're siphoning reservations for AI chips off to your private companies, okay? Now, in more recent NVIDIA emails from late April, it said Musk's comment on the first quarter test of the call conflicts with bookings. And that his April post about $10 billion in AI spending also conflicts with bookings and their forecast for 2025. The email referenced news about Tesla's ongoing layoffs and warned that headcount reductions could cause further delays with the H100 project. I don't know how you square it, folks. And he's going to have his hands full today. And you better watch Tesla because it doesn't get much more tantalizing than that. It really doesn't. And I don't know how you square paying somebody $55 billion to run a publicly traded company when that company, okay, I mean, what's it worth right now? 550 or something like that? 550 billion, 600 billion? What are we at right now? 700, 558 billion dollars. So he wants one tenth of the company for himself just to be CEO. And in that role as CEO, he's siphoning off reservations for the most important commodity in the world, you could argue right now AI chips from NVIDIA. And he's not only doing that. He's lying to the public on his conference calls. And listen, I'm not out here just being a hater. I'm out here telling you to be careful on this equity. I have for some time, folks, okay? There's no reason why he should get that pay package, and you could see a very real chance that he will eventually depart this company because he does not deserve that pay package, in my opinion. And if he doesn't get that pay package, he's probably going to spend his time on other ventures like uh, AI, right? Open AI, et cetera, uh, on X, on Twitter, and develop a company with a much bigger ownership share. And you're seeing it on the right, on the writing on the wall. And then you got the fact that he's lying on conference calls about the numbers. I mean, that's a straight out lie. So they're going to have their hands full today on Tesla. We'll see what happens to, to say the least. Right. But yeah, a little bit of a pullback. And I think that just might be the beginning of the volatility over there on Tesla today. All right, what else we got happening in the world? How about India? Yeah, uh, a little bit of a shakeup over there in India. So you got Modi not going to win what he thought he was going to win. Modi's party poised to lose India majority in a stunning blow. So the opposition bloc is poised to win over 220 seats. Modi is still going to have a sizable number of seats, but it seems like he's going to have to team up. And they were talking about more than 500 seats, uh, excuse me, 400 seats at one point. It seems like his number is going to come in under 300. And so it is going to be interesting to see how that will happen. I'm trying to get some of the numbers here as we get them exactly. I was reading this before we came on. Let's see. All right, I'll pull this up in the next break. We can talk about it. I'll get some of those numbers exactly. Here we go. 
Modi's party is significantly lower than 2019 when it won 303 seats. It's currently it is still more than double that of the Congress party. So Modi's party is ahead in 240 seats compared with the 99 for Congress. But what's going to happen here is, is that Modi talked about 400 plus seats. So what did he do? He overpromised and underdelivered. And you're going to have the opposition using that against him. The shocking result has emboldened the opposition, which is trying to portray a weaker mandate for Bodhi's party as a defeat from Modi. So you got a little bit of a shakeup there in India. We'll see how that one plays out. What else we got going on this morning? Yeah, let's talk a little bit of bonds as we come into this break. What do we got? We got about 45 seconds left. Let me scroll up here. Global bond rally waivers with jobs data coming out on Friday. So we had a little bit of a pullback in yields yesterday. The 10-year, a little changed at 4.39 after it slid 11 points yesterday. So it was a, what, approaching almost 4.5 yesterday. And check out this chart, right? We were all the way down. You're looking at the black is the U.S. 10-year. The blue here is Germany. The red is Australia. You can see the correlation. Well off the lows we had in December. But the market right now is in about one and a half cups by the end of the year. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man Jacob. We'll come back from the market open. We got a lot to talk about. Stay tuned. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers and Trading Room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Tommy, thank you for having me on. Jacob Shoup, good morning. How we doing, man? Doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing good. 
Good. Uh, what are we so, looking at? Yeah. Did you happen to hear what I was talking about, Elon, <clears throat> earlier in the program? I did. Um, with some of what he's directing some of those chips to to some of his private companies and some of the stories that are just kind of breaking at 9 o'clock? Absolutely. So they were reserved for Tesla. Now they're going to X and X AI. What do you think about that, man? Because this story, you know, I've been a little bit of a bear, a little bit of Tesla recently, so I know I have my bias. I'm always looking for other perspectives. And I feel like that should be a monumental story in the context. But guess what? He's kind of the, the Teflon Don to a certain degree that everything just bounces off on this equity. And I'm going to be really interested to see how this one shakes out because, you know, in light of going for a huge pay package – and then these are the things he's doing as the CEO. I, I don't understand it to a certain degree. This, I think, is what can get him into trouble eventually. You think? So, you know, he's <laughs> he's promising on the calls that these are going to Tesla, right? Tesla, yeah. I mean, he, he has used this company in a lot of ways as kind of a, a way to fund other ventures that he has. We have, we get no exposure as investors to X or X AI or really anything else besides Tesla, right? And this is what I've said is why Tesla can sometimes seem pretty persistent, right? Even if the car company itself isn't doing well. I mean, obviously, we've had, you know, this this stock is beleaguered for quite some time now. But it's this idea that people are investing in Musk, right? And he kind of sure. acts like that as well. Yeah. <clears throat> when SpaceX does well, Tesla can sometimes see uh, s some positive upside because of that. Same with X or XAI. Um, but, I mean, if I were investing... In Tesla because the guy was buying H100 chips um, and then he said surprise I'm actually going to take all that money that we spent to get the H100 trip chips and we're putting it to my private company I would be uh, I'd be pretty upset I would think yeah and the kicker is he didn't even say it you have stories coming out from Nvidia saying it that their emails are saying hey, he wasn't <laughs> right, he wasn't being so. honest on the yeah. on the conference call right so right. I mean, that's you know you got a few people at the SEC this morning saying you know Maybe we should look into the comments that he's making, which are, you know, material facts that he's giving to investors on a conference call. And it turns out that he's siphoning off those chips to make sure that his private companies are getting them first. I mean, it doesn't get much more ridiculous, for so, lack of a better term. Right. Um, and I'm seeing yeah. what he had done. And this is what's so <clears throat> weird about the, the world where we have something like Twitter, right, where you can get these kind of influential people and they can just rail off something. Apparently, he wrote that <clears throat> Tesla would be spending the money in combined training and inference with AI. Nothing to do really with X, but it's, it's funny how he's doing this, right? And this is how I think he can kind of shield himself from everything, right? So he's spending this money. The chips are going to X and X AI. And by some extension, he's going to be able to say, well, this gives us insight, um, or we may be able somehow to combine what we're doing and, and, and bring it into Tesla or something. And... and in my opinion, you know, again, it's kind of it's not it's not forthright, which I think is a problem. Yeah, it should be a problem. Um, and we'll see, though. And as we yeah. say that Tesla's got a little bit of a pop. They actually open pretty yeah. much flat. Not many other equities <laughs> have to do that. But you put it well, man. This is an equity that. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, they're believing in Elon. And, and boy, it is a, a fanboy enterprise to some degrees. Big and, time. and hey, let's jump to, to GameStop if we can from that. Yes. Uh, down another 8%. I'm not sure if you saw, but Roaring Kitty looks like he has held on for now uh, to his position, at least as of his last update. So the headline out there was that uh, Post seems to show. I love how everything kind of gives a little bit of disclaimer. Seems to show the trader held on to that giant position. He posts another update with his GMA YOLO update as of June 3rd. Now, boy, I heard you doing my dad's show yesterday, man. Great program and, you know, kind of continuing the conversation that we had yesterday yep. morning about who is he going to eventually sell these to retail traders but well boy maybe maybe retail traders are waking up because you're down again you're back to 25 <laughs> bucks um he was up to 289 million maybe that's as of the close i'm not sure you know he doesn't exactly totally. give when this is what time that's that's there's some you know ambiguity in terms of what this is going on but nonetheless he made some money of course from where we were on sunday's close to where we were yesterday but you're down a little bit. He's got $20 calls. Those are five bucks in the money. He's got five million shares out there, regardless of the five million. And it looks like, yeah, that was the last price was $28. Okay, so he posted this when the equity was trading at 28, which was the close as of yesterday. Okay. Um, right. 
But yeah, what do you think of the yeah. GameStop? You think he's going to hold? Like we said, and, and, yeah, right. and uh, what a day. It's your birthday, June 21st. We'll That's see right. He's holding it until your birthday, right? And we'll see what happens on it. Yeah, no, I know. Totally. And, and, you know, he's in a really weird position, right? Because deep value is viewed at, by these super stonk guys, as this was the Reddit page you, you that, that clip was from, uh, yeah. or Wall Street Bets. This guy is uh, legendary with with people on those subreddits and sure. so he gets into this weird position where yeah i mean he's going to you know it's it's the retail people that he's selling against in a way right but he can't do it so outright he yes. loses this this lore or this you know so so he he gets in and that must be relatively frustrating and i'm sure he probably anticipated it but imagine you could cash out in a big way real quick you know basically pull the rug right which in a way could you know, you could kind of argue might be a pump and dump in, in a sense, um, but sure. the, but the culture will end up hating him for it, and so he has to do this very intelligently, and he has yeah. to exit these positions not all at once. He has to structure it, and you know, him posting that at the end of the day is is the strategy he has to follow. He has to be like, look, I'm still in here. Ah, uh, yeah, I yeah. took some off the top, so whatever. But <laughs> he what's gets crazy that. is he's yeah. only got like. 13 more days where something's got to change <laughs> trading days I'm talking about which is interesting where it's like okay yeah. where's the GME YOLO update going to say that guess what those options are gone oh, or, be, you know, it'll maybe happen. they got rolled over it'll, yeah. it'll happen, <laughs> it'll happen. Uh, and it does remind me not to bring it back to Elon but you make a great point as in he can't be obvious and it brings me back to how you know Elon made a great trade exiting Tesla at yeah. some of the highs and how did he do it he 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 hid the ability, my opinion, okay, but that, oh, I have to sell them to buy Twitter. He wouldn't have sold them if he thought it was an undervalued equity at that time. You know, he's even right. been out there at times in the past saying it's overvalued. He probably knew that it was probably overvalued at that point in time at $400 a share. He said, why wouldn't I buy Twitter? Even if Twitter tanks by 50% in value because I blow the place up and fire all the engineers, uh, Tesla is off more than 50% from where it was at <laughs> right. that price. So he was able to sell, and he, he kind of hid that he wanted to dump some of those shares to retail traders, you know, some of his own fanboys, I'm sure, at some of those price levels. Kind of reminds me of it, yeah. Now, Absolutely. we talked about, and, and we don't have to spend the whole show on this, but it is interesting because we talked about manipulation, right? And we were saying, yep. you know, it's interesting that he's making these posts on X, or where is he making them? On X, I think, right? Um, he was initially making them on X, and then is being posted now to certain subreddits. He is. OK. Yeah. So it is interesting because one of the things that they're looking at is, you know, the discussion over E-Trade. And I don't think they can do this. I think that they'd get challenged um, in terms of manipulation, you know, to ban him for manipulation. So E-Trade, supposedly the story out there, they're debating whether to ban him. Yeah. And they're debating, you know, whether it's potential market manipulation. Mm -hmm. I think they got a big there's there's a there's a high bar there um, for because, you know, we have the freedom of speech and. He is just putting out his position. That's right. And so it's, it's he's a not, real fine. He, yeah. He's not lying about got, it. Yeah. Right. You know, I don't think he's lying. I don't think he'd be that foolish with how not notable he is. We can finish this up after the yeah, break. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Uh, I think he's got a good case, and I think they're, they, they can't ban him. Yeah. Big time. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, what's going on, Tommy? So just finishing up that conversation, yeah. right? Thankfully, we have freedom of speech, and I think they got a high bar. Even though we all know that he is manipulating the market to a certain degree, um, it's not something that's illegal when you know he himself is just posting his positions. And if you think about it on a global, not global, on just a greater scale, um, we want to have freedom of speech, man. And there's nothing wrong with with somebody saying, "I own this equity because I believe in right. it," right? And and so the high, yeah. there should be a high bar there. And even though we, we know the games that are kind of going on in the background, um, I, I think they have a high bar. And so yeah. I, I imagine that they're having those exact same conversations saying, man, if we do this, you know that he's going to bring it with a challenge. And do we really have the legal muster to, to make what he's doing something that we can ban um, outright? And I don't think that they do. And I, I don't think that they should. To, to put it even a better in a better context so we'll see um and that's why i think that the stuff he's posting is true because if yeah. it was ever false then boy he would open himself up and you gotta figure that he has lawyers when he's already appeared in front of congress going back to the original meme craze um so you know take it for what it's worth but boy we'll see if he holds he'll see if he's got those diamond hands because yeah. You're not talking about just millions. You're talking about billions almost at this point, man, which is remarkable. I mean, yeah. if he exercises those shares, so he's going to have, what's he got, 5 million shares of common. He's got uh, options, 120,000 contracts. Each contract's 100 shares. So that's 12 million shares of it. So if he exercises those, he's going to be left with 17 million. And I think that's like 3 to 5 to 6% of the... Uh, entire float what's it got <laughs> yeah it's like the they only the the company only has 351 yeah. million shares so he would be a five percent owner um okay. of that equity if he exercises those shares That's so nuts. it is it is not small potatoes as they would say anymore pretty remarkable definitely and i mean i don't think they really i don't think they have a case right i mean it, no people want to get shouldn't. in when someone wails yeah. you know and yeah every large equity group wants to do the same thing look i'm, I'm taking a big long position in something yeah, yeah I, I they all talk up their own book totally and you They're know you see short it. sellers out there in the same way right what do they do they put out <laughs> literally a, a a press book as it, to why their short position is accurate um hindenburg so number it's, one it's 
Yeah, and and we want that, folks. You know what yeah. I mean? You want to be able to have yeah. people to express their opinions. And yeah, you know the background of what's going on, okay? He's a tantalizing figure. Uh, it's the word of the day. And he's, he's, he really gets the investors going. But to a certain degree, how do you limit something like that with somebody just putting out their own positions into the public? And, you know, it's, it's similar to what we do at TFNN in terms of newsletters, right? Um, we have the ability to publish opinions, trades, et cetera, because it's basically stating opinions. And there was a big constitutional case, whether you needed to be registered as an investment advisor, et cetera. And thankfully, you know, the Constitution, this is going back to the 80s, I believe, mm -hmm. that the Supreme Court said, no, no, that's freedom of speech, man. You're allowed to tell people, I'm buying this equity. I think this is an equity that's a good thing. You're not allowed to give tailored investment advice, folks. And that is the difference. If you don't understand it, look it up, okay? When people say, oh, you're allowed to put on a newsletter. Are you allowed to be, you know, is that, do you need to be a registered adv investment advisor? The difference there is, okay, is if... I'm allowed to say anything, right? I'm buying this equity. I think it's going to this price point. I'm doing this. This is what I think is going to happen. The difference is if I ask you for your tailored economic situation, if I say, how old are you? How much money do you have in savings? What's your risk investment profile? Uh, you know, what, what type of diversification do you need for your life goals? No, then I'm tailoring investments, and that's where you do need to be a registered investment advisor. But if you're just stating your opinions on the market, that is free speech. 101. Right. So it's interesting. And I think that even the stories, I mean, they're, they're, they're clickbait to a certain degree, right? Who's not <laughs> sure. going to click on E-Trade's going to ban Roaring Kitty? Right, right, I mean, right, that one right. gets the clicks themselves. But all right, let's jump, a little, let's jump around a little bit. How about, how about the dollar, man? <clears throat> so I was reading a story this morning. Let me find it up here, here, here for a second. About dollar strength. Let me get it up here. I got a lot of good stories. Here we go. Nope, that's the bond story. Oh, forgive me. Come on. Bouncing off that 104 level. Here wow. we go. Yeah. So this one is from the journal, okay, from this morning. The dollar is at the strongest since 1980s. Can it last? Boy, we live in interesting times, man. Uh, the greenback is historically very expensive amid a recovery in global growth and fraught election campaign. Boy, election season, man. Five months from an election. You yeah. talk about getting ready for the clown show all around. <laughs> um, but you take a look at this. The dollar, this is what I really want to bring up and take a look at. The real effective exchange rate of the dollar, and boy, it is interesting to see mm -hmm. some of these peaks, how minimal the time has been. Now, we've sustained here, you know, in terms of look at where we are. What do we get up there at? Probably 2017, 18, we were hitting almost 90 in terms of the real effective exchange rate. You see the spikes we had. We had one in 85, 86. We had one in the dot-com peak whether it was like, you know, right past 2000, 2002, 2003. And now we're peaking even above those levels. And, you know, the economy is so strong, especially in the U.S., man. We're seeing what's happening in Europe right now, of course. We're seeing the strength that the America has. We're seeing unemployment sustaining under four. So there is a real argument that, yes, we can sustain some strength <clears throat> when you got to compare it. I mean, yesterday I was talking about, I don't know if you saw, well, I think it was before you got on the air, about the SWIFT. Right, that the the dollar accounts for 48% of yeah. transactions through the international SWIFT. Uh, it's the highest in decades, or something like that, in terms of dollar declining. Everyone's talking about bricks, but when you talk about real transactions, man, the dollar is where it at, totally. where it's at. So we'll see if it if it holds, man, because you know you look at something like gold. I mean, geez, so strong in light of where the dollar is. And we'll see where we go. But I thought it was interesting. What do you think about the dollar at these price levels? I think we've been seeing it once to test this lower. Let me get off this. I was looking at the large scale here, the long time frame. But, I mean, bouncing off that 104 level, coming right back up. I mean, we've seen it, you know, do it twice so far this past year. I think it wants these lower levels without a doubt. This would be positive for us in a, in a major way. Um, you know, obviously, it cheaper dollar in this way is, is better for the U.S. as everyone gets to use it a little bit more, right? It's not as cost prohibitive. Um, but as it stands now, this kind of bounce off is interesting because I was thinking we were going to hit this 104 and kind of stay around. I, I think we'll probably test that 104 flat um, sometime soon as well. It, it seems like it wants lower price. Now, but, uh, to play devil's advocate, and yeah. this is just a question I asked myself, right? I said, right. what happens to inflation and commodity prices, if we start getting a weak dollar, because we've seen some of that play out in Europe, right, in terms of that's going to then kind of weigh on that 
commodities input prices might go up a little bit, especially when you're going to anyway. It's just it's just uh, you know there's no magic ball answer, but it is For interesting sure. where we have so many variables right now in the market. Yeah. That it's 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 pretty perplexing when you talk about because in normal times, yeah, um, but that you is interesting that. when we're still dealing with some inflation factors. That if we really get a pullback, and that's where the Fed has a problem, and they're so hesitant, and they should be, because if they start really dropping the rates, what's going to happen? You're going to weaken the dollar. You're going to drop the rates. The cost of capital is going to decrease. Mm -hmm. You're going to have housing prices should get a bid or at least be helped out, and commodity prices should go up because they're priced in dollars to the same degree. Yeah. It, this is going to be a weird thing for the Fed to try to control. Oof. There's something that, I know we were going to the break, but we have something from the Cleveland Fed came out coming out and said several years until we can hit 2%. So, Oof, yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back. <clears throat> the Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. going on Tommy so I want to jump next for works you see Paramount so they got a yeah. big day today I think what do they got investor day or something like that going on today uh, let's see what do they have going on something today that they're going to announce <clears throat> and they have yeah they're going to present a plan at the company's annual shareholder yep. meeting okay yep. today <clears throat> and what they have going on is a merger <clears throat> and yeah. yeah and so it's going to be interesting I mean I have Paramount in my house right now, and okay. I'll tell you what it is interesting having a child. Paramount includes Nickelodeon, which is interesting out there as well. 
And so Nickelodeon, you got Paw Patrol out there. Tommy's a big fan. You got some kids programs out there, of course. You have uh, one of the Sonic movies is out there, which he's he's all about Sonic and Tails uh, right now. And Insane. I was yeah, too at that age. It's crazy. Isn't it funny? And it's a, you know he's still yeah. Spider Man, dinosaurs everywhere. <laughs> Hulk, yeah. The Marvel <laughs> characters are a big one, of course. Um, so that's going on in Paramount. It was no real mover today. That's been talked about for some time, I think. You pull up Paramount. And yes, yeah, so you got the huge jump yesterday up to almost 13. You're actually down 2% today on Paramount. But what I found interesting as well is that that story, and then you segue to Jeffrey Katzenberg. So he's raising almost half a billion dollars for his investment company, Winderco or something. They're focused on cybersecurity, consumer yeah. technology, and the future of work. Uh -huh. They're avoiding digital media and seeking out startups. Now, I don't know how he's going to do there, okay? But what I did find interesting is that for those that forget, and listen, Katzenberg, man, he's, he's done some amazing things in Hollywood. But do you remember Quibi, Jacob? Do you remember this like venture? Vaguely. What? So yeah, $1.75 billion in funding is what they did. And it was a, a good idea, and that's probably why he got the funding, in terms of short video, right? Ten minutes or less. I do remember. It was going to be five oh. to ten minute chapters. He was going to try and change <laughs> what was happening, right? He was going to bring in Chrissy Teigen, Kevin Hart, um, and they raised $1.75 billion. They had a billion dollar round in 2018, and then they had another 750 million dollar round, and within a couple of years, all that money was going gone, and they shut it down. So anyway, for what it's worth, that's right. I remember one. this in COVID too, at the time when TikTok yeah. was blowing up. I know they were that's, a little bit I longer, mean, but come on. Yeah, and almost two billion dollars. <laughs> Probably didn't need that type of money before you showed a little bit of promise. Thanks, Thanks for jumping on with me, Jacob. Appreciate Thank you it. Thank for man. having me on, Tommy. It's always good. Always good, man. Have a great day. Appreciate you too. it. Take care of it, guys. Take care, folks.